Welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Return to Firetop Mountain by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part I was on paragraph 32 and I was about to decide whether to open the door and turn to paragraph 144 um, or walk on and turn to paragraph 97. We're going to open the door so let's go to 144. <clears throat> okay here we go. As you open the door a terrible stench assails you. Now the door opens into a room with a sunken floor. Looking down, you see three bloated worms, each four meters long, slithering over the carcass of a dead dog. Uh, they are yellowish white and have large oval suckered mouths with which they are blindly trying to grip the dog in order to suck out its juices. Lovely. Uh, there are several rotting carcasses in the pit and these are the cause of the nauseating stench. Um, or nauseous stench, since nauseating means nauseous, and vice versa. Um, one thing that annoys me is that uh, nauseous does not mean nauseated. I mean, if you say that you're nauseous, it means that you cause nausea. It uh, doesn't mean that you feel nausea. There are so many people that get that wrong. It's, you know, I'm a, I read it everywhere. I even had an English teacher at school, I, uh, um, I actually wrote down one of my essays, um, I actually wrote down nauseated, and she actually crossed it out and uh, um, quote unquote corrected me with nauseous, unbelievable, it's nauseated, not nauseous, nauseous means to cause nausea, oh, anyway, um, as one of the sucker worms rolls to one side, uh, you notice an ornately made brass box lying on the floor of the pit. If you want to jump down into the pit to retrieve the box, turn to seven. If you would rather close the door behind you and carry on up the tunnel, turn to 97. Okay, we're going to jump down, uh, so we're going to turn to seven. And let's have a quick look at these uh, nauseous uh, worms. Lovely, they're eating a dead dog. Oh, absolutely revolting. Okay. Although they do eat dog in China, um, so yeah, uh, why they eat dog I don't know, I've, I've never tried it myself, uh, nor would I want to. Anyway, uh, here's paragraph 7. You wait for a gap to appear between the worms on the floor, then you jump. Uh, the sucker worms show no interest in you, preferring to feast on the dead flesh of the dog. However, one of the worms has rolled over on top of the box. Will you wait for it to slide off the box, turn to 307, or hack at it with your sword straight away? Turn to 396. Okay, we're going to wait for it. So let's go to 307. There we go. Uh, the worm slips off the box almost immediately. You seize your opportunity grab the box and scramble out of the pit. Back in the tunnel, you shake the box but can hear no rattling coming from it. You cautiously lift the lid only to discover that the box contains nothing more than a page from a tiny book. You turn the box over and see that the word fire is scratched on its underside. Uh, the box is quite large and if you wish to put it in your backpack and take it with you, you will have to leave two other items behind. Um, cross them off your equipment list. After deciding what to do, you may now either read the page from the book, turn to 230, or walk further up the tunnel, turn to 97. Okay, we're going to leave, because we have two useless items with us, we're going to leave uh, the calling horn, we don't need that anymore. Let's get rid of that, and we're going to leave the rat skull, so let's get rid of that. Ugh. There we go. I have to sort this out, tidy it up a bit. There we go. I'll put this on a new line. There we go. Okay, brilliant. So now we can take the the page. What does the um what does the page say? Oh yeah, we haven't, we haven't read it yet. Okay, yeah. So we're going to cross them off, and then we're going to read the page from the book. Okay, so turn to two hundred thirty. Okay, so no longer have a rat skull that can be left with the with the worms or whatever. I don't know. They're the nauseous worms. Okay, now the text on the page is too small to read. If you have a magnifying glass, turn to 39. 
If you do not have a magnifying glass, you will have to forget about the page and set off along the tunnel. 10 to 97. Okay, we do have a, um, a magnifying glass as always, so um, mirror magnifying glass I've uh, put down. Anyway, so we're going to 10 to 39. Now, there's just a single sentence on the page. It reads, the water elemental of light is number 27 and destroys the fire elemental of chaos. Okay, let's write that down. Water elemental of light. The water elemental of light this, um, is numbered. Is, yep, is numbered 27 and destroys the what is it destroys the fire elemental of chaos right. destroys the fire elemental of chaos there we go lovely I always say lovely after I write something down don't I or type something down rather okay um, you memorize the words while you walk on up the tunnel 10 to 97 Let's do this thing. Okay, the tunnel continues straight ahead, and you soon arrive at yet another door in the right-hand wall. You press your ear against the door, but can hear nothing. If you wish to open the door, turn to 222. If you would rather walk on, turn to 373. Okay, we are going to walk on, turn to 373. Here we go. Uh, the tunnel ends eventually. I mean, the tunnel eventually ends at a T junction. If you wish to go to the left, turn to four. If you wish to go to the right, turn to 48. We're going to go to the right, so we're going to turn to 48. Here we go. Uh, the tunnel ends at a wooden door with many strange symbols carved on it. Various objects are nailed to the door, including old coins, a rabbit's foot, various small skulls, a copper triangle, and a shriveled ear. Uh, you listen at the door and hear a woman's voice um, ordering someone to bring her a bowl of crushed maggots. If you want to open the door, turn to 305. If you want to turn back and go past the last junction, turn to 4. Now we're going to open the door, of course. So turn to 305. Yeah, of course, because the other option is what we've just uh, is what we've already declined, which was going left at the T junction. So as we went right, we might as well carry on. Anyway, turn to 305 because we're opening the door. Here we go. Now the door opens, and you behold a lavishly furnished chamber. Now the walls are covered with red and purple silk drapes, and there are large, brightly coloured cushions lying on the floor. Uh, there is an alcove in the far wall, out of which a young boy appears carrying a bowl. He is wearing a silver headband and a large jewel set in the centre. He carries the bowl over to a glass table where a beautiful woman is grinding components with a mortar and pestle. She too is wearing a headband, but hers is made of tiny flowers, made from tiny flowers. Um, her gossamer... Um, gossamer thin robes. Um, I'm not. F I'm. Um, I'm not familiar with that word. Um, billow in the draft from the tunnel, and she looks up and smiles at you. Come in and close the door, she says in an alluring voice. If you are wearing a gold ring with the words "Seeing is Believing" inscribed on it, turn to the paragraph with the number that is the same as that on the ring. If you are not wearing this ring, turn to 146. Before we do that, let's have a quick look at this. Is she alluring? Not really. I wouldn't call her beautiful. And the boy looks like he has that disease where they age really quickly. It's not a nice disease. It's sort of, and they're sort of like little boys, but they have a sort of uh, complexion of, of a very old man. It's uh, not a very nice disease at all. Um, and the sufferers of it have my deep sympathy and pity, but that boy looks like he has that disease. Um, anyway, that woman is not beautiful. You know, she looks a bit too old. Looks at least 45. Anyway, um, so what are we going to do? She can't be that beautiful if she 
if she's asking for crushed maggots or whatever. Um, we are carrying a ring with seeing is believing. And a gold ring, 30, seeing is believing. And the paragraph is 30, so we are going to go to paragraph 30. So let's go to paragraph 30. Now, the ring you are wearing allows you to see through illusions. Uh, the image of the woman and the young boy slowly fade away, revealing their true identities. In front of you stands a hideous-looking hunchbacked witch. Her wiry, bent and hairy fingers end in long, dirty nails. Her eyes are dark and hollow, and her clothes are tattered rags. Her servant is a mutant beast with a human torso and a, and a dog's head. Um, all at once you hear a um, a voice inside your head, a warning from the ring, crying out, Ring the bell, ring the bell. If you are carrying a silver bell, turn to 22. If you are not carrying a bell, turn to 228. Um, maybe uh, the body of the dog, you know, since he just has the head. Uh, maybe uh, the, the body was the one with the worms, I don't know. Anyway, um, do, we have, uh, a, uh, do we have a silver bell? Fiddle D. Where's the silver bell? It doesn't look good. Small wooden ball, blah blah blah. It's just a little herb. Lots of stuff. Oh, yes, there it is. Yeah, I uh, can't believe I missed that. Yes, we do have a silver bell. Thank God for that because we need it. Um, 22. So let's go to 22. Oh, I only need to use the scroll wheel. It's uh, nearby. You quickly take the bell out of your backpack and shake it vigorously. A magical note rings out and the witch covers her ears, trying to shut out the pure sound. She staggers backwards and starts to scream, before collapsing to the floor unconscious. Uh, the dog beast appears unharmed by the bell's ringing. It drops the bowl it is carrying and charges at you, swinging a ball and chain. Mutant dog beast, skill 8, stamina 8. If you win, send a 282. Alright, let's do this. Uh, mutant Dog Beast 8-8. Eight, eight. eight and 8. Okay, as usual, we uh, do him first. Okay, so roll two dice for him. 8 plus 7 is 15. 12 plus 4 is 16. So 15 to 16, I win just... 15 to 16, that means he's down to... I haven't used luck in a battle in this book yet, have I? Anyway, 6. Oh yeah, last video was that annoying uh, eyeball eating contest, which, are, which is just luck-based, and I screwed up several times. Anyway, so let's roll for him again. He gets an 11, that's uh, 19. I get a 3, that's 15. So 19 to 15, and he wins. Brilliant. Being ironic, of course, it's not brilliant. It's absolutely annoying and devastating, but at least we're at maximum health. Not any more, though. Or maximum stamina, I should say. Okay, he gets a 12. That's annoying. That's 20. I get a 4. That's 16. That's pretty irritating. You get the maximum. Gets, he gets the maximum score. 20 to 14. No, wait a minute. 20 to 16, wasn't it? Yep, 16. 20 to 16. So we're down to 19 now. Okay, and again, he gets, or rather, yes, yeah, the dog beast, not the witch. Um, he gets a 9, that's uh, 17. I get a 4, that's 16. Oh, 17 to 16, he wins again. This dog beast is nasty, isn't it? And a 17 now. Right. Come on, is this the time I turn it all around? He gets uh, a 10, that's 18. I get a 4, that's 6. I keep getting 16. 18 to 16. Look at that, that's 16, 15, 16, 16, 16 now. What are the odds of that? Not very high, I'd wager. Right. He gets a 7, that's better, that's 15. I get 11, that's 23. So 15 to 23, thank God I'm turning it around. 15 to 23. So he's down to 4. 
Um, I'm not going to use luck. Um, he gets a 4, that's better, that's 12 for him. I get a 9, that's 21. So 12 to 21. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. He's down to 2. Last one. He gets 10, that's 18. I get 6, that's 18. Oh, well, at least it's an oval... An overall, uh, 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 what's the difference? No overall majority. Okay, so that's no one got hurt there. Now he gets a seven, that's 15. I get a four, that's 16. Good, 15 to 16, I win just. Good. And goodbye, mutant dog beast. Right, get rid of the buzzing because it's tremendously irritating in my ears, or mine ears, I should say. Um, uh, yeah, so if you win, turn to 282. We did win, so let's go there. 282. 500. 280. Right, uh, you look around and observe that the witch is still lying unconscious on the floor. Looking back down at the lifeless dog beast, you see the sparkling jewel in its headband. If you want to wear the headband, turn to 338. If you'd rather search the chamber, turn to 115. Yeah, probably not a good idea to uh, wear the headband, since it's obviously made him into some sort of slave. It'll probably do the same thing to us. So, uh, so we're going to search the chamber and turn to 115. Oh, that's lucky. Uh, the witch is not carrying anything of... In um, I'll start again. The witch is not carrying anything of any interest to you. Uh, of any interest to you. However, when you look behind the drapes, you find a metal panel with a handle set in the wall and a slot above it. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll say that again. However, when you look behind the drapes, you find a metal panel with a handle set in the wall and a slot above it. There we go. Silver coins only, a sign on the wall warns. If you have two silver pieces to put in the slot, turn to 264. If you'd, if you'd like to try two other coins, turn to 362. Okay, we do have two silver coins. Let's use them up. I think we do anyway. Yeah, we have exactly two silver coins. Let's use them and then uh, uh, go to the relevant paragraph. Okay, 264. It's 500 uh, Fearn There we go. In German, by the way. Anyway, uh, 264. Now you hear a metallic click and the panel drops down a centimetre. You grip the handle and pull out a metal drawer. Inside the drawer you find a large dragon's tooth made of gold, made from gold. It has the number 94 scratched on it. Add one luck point, okay. Gold tooth, we don't need any luck, but gold tooth, um, dragon's tooth, isn't it? Just put 94, there we go, obviously jubbly, right, uh, yeah, um, add one luck point, you leave the chamber with renewed determination and walk back down the tunnel and on past the junction, turn to four, okay, so we're going there anyway, all right, let's go to four, here we are, it is not long before you arrive at a great iron door in the right-hand wall. The door is firmly locked, but there is a large keyhole in the door. If you have an iron key, turn to the paragraph number that is inscribed on the key. If you do not have an iron key, you will have to walk on. Turn to 172. Okay, do we have an iron key? A large iron key, 142. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, so let's go to 142. It's nice when we have all the things, isn't it? Now, the huge door swings slowly inwards, creaking on its old hinges. You find yourself in a short corridor which leads into a large room. At the end of the corridor, you spot a goblin. At the same moment, the goblin sees you and reaches across to a lever set in the wall. If you have a throwing dagger tucked down your boot, turn to 34. If you do not have a throwing dagger, turn to 184. Okay, do we have this dagger, or a dagger? Um, right, we lots of stuff. Do we have this? Uh, oh yes, I put dagger, I assume that's the dagger we need. Yeah, it must be the one. We do have a throwing dagger, so we're going to... 
34. I remember it said tucked in now, boot or something, but I just wrote down dagger. Anyway, turn to 34. Oh, there it is. Um, you whip the dagger out of your boot and throw it at the goblin. Roll two dice if the total is less than or equal to your skill. Turn to 371 if the total is greater than your skill. Turn to 130. Okay. Um, okay, this needs to be less than or equal to 12, which is pretty much guaranteed. Right, 7, so it's less than or equal to 12, because that's our skill score, as you can see there. I think if we fail that, I think it's not very good, not very good at all. I, I think it's uh, the end of our adventure, but I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, so equal to our skills, uh, less than equal to our skill, turn to 371. Yeah, so that's why you need decent skill, because if you screw that up, you've uh, uh, you've lost the book. But you know, you can always do what I do and just start. You know, just ignore it and just. Uh, do it again until you succeed because it's pretty stupid and really cheap um, I'll be in Livingstone to put that sort of death mechanic in anyway, uh, the dagger finds its mark hitting the goblin squarely in the chest and it slumps forward on its face after retrieving your dagger you walk down the corridor and enter what appears to be a meeting room in the centre of the room is a long table surrounded by eight chairs the walls are lined with shelves full of books, manuscripts, scrolls and maps uh, there are several piles of gold coins on the table, and odd coins lie scattered about the room. A door in the far wall suddenly opens, and an old man enters. He is wearing a long purple gown with a raised collar and a purple headband. Intruder, he says grimly, you have no right to be here, but if you are smart enough, you may be of use to me. Answer my question and live, fail, and you die. Tell me, how many gold coins are there in this room? Um, look at the illustration and count them up. If you know how many there are, turn to the paragraph with that number. If you get the answer wrong, um, remember to turn to 232. Okay, so we have to count how many gold coins are in this picture. All right. Oh, blimey. It's a bit sort of... Let me zoom in. It's even more pixelated. Let's just leave it like that. Okay, um, let's count. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, blimey, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, uh, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. I think there are 52. And it's a good job I counted 52 because that's the answer we need. Because <laughs> I wrote that down in my notes. Because that is difficult to... It's difficult to see because the illustration in this uh, PDF I'm using is a bit sort of pixelated. I mean, if I zoom in... Yeah, look. Now count them. Have a go, viewers at home. Have a go at counting that critter. Look at that. Anyway, the answer is 52. Uh, to, uh, let's go to... Yeah, so if you get it wrong, if it isn't him saying well done or whatever, you have to go to 232, and I think it's death. So 52 is the answer. Uh, very good, the old man says calmly. Um, you will make an excellent spy for Zagor, after I've made a few alterations to your mind. It is a simple task to alter the human brain for a mind-bender such as me. He said I when he needs me, such as... He means me, such as me. Oh, I hate it when people get that wrong. It isn't more formal, it isn't correct. It's just, it sounds awkward and it's wrong. After such as, you need, yeah, you need objective pronouns. So it's me, him, them... Um, uh, whom, not a subjective pronouns, which is I, he, they, uh, who, and uh, she, and that sort of thing. It's really annoying. I mean, you can't even extend it like with that and say, oh, it's such as I am, because that just sounds ridiculous. It's such as me. Ugh, unbelievable. I mean, they really need me as a proofreader in these books, I tell you. Anyway... It is a simple task to alter the human brain for a mind-bender such as me. Even, well, even, well, 
nearly as bad is when they say such as myself. That's another redundant reflexive. But uh, such as I is... Well, I'd prefer that just to such as I, because that's just stupid. Anyway, um, now, should I change you into a servant of chaos or make you just plain evil? While the mind bender is chuckling to himself, you decide to strike. Will you use a whip if you have one? 10 to 382. Garlic, 10 to 224. Or your sword, 10 to 174. Um, we are going to use a whip, because we do have a whip. Uh, yep, leather whip. Licorice whip. Right. Uh, it's 382, here we go. Such as I. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Complete ignorance. Um, removing your whip from your belt... You lash out at the mind bender. Your aim is perfect, and the thin leather, uh, leather rather, leather cord coils round his neck. With a quick jerk, you pull him to the ground. Then you jam a wooden ball in his mouth, cover his head with a cloth bag, and bind his arms with the whip to stop him from trying any sorcery. If you wish to search the room, turn to 376. If you'd rather walk through the door from which the mind bender appeared, turn to 249. Or, you know, instead of saying from which, you could also say whence. You could say, if you would rather walk through the door, whence the mind bender appeared, because whence means from which, or from where. Or, where from, um, one word. Anyway, we're going to search the room, so turn to 376. You see, with my channel and my videos, you get entertaining... Uh, you get entertaining videos of me reading books, and you also get some important lessons in English grammar and a little bit of maths thrown in for good measure. Uh, so that's that's why you, uh, that's why you should subscribe if uh, you haven't already. But I'm not one to nag people for, uh, for subscribers. I don't need subscribers. I don't make any money from this whatsoever. It doesn't affect me in the slightest. I only do these videos purely for my own amusement so if you want to subscribe i'm really happy that you do if you don't i don't i don't care it's not a problem anyway um after picking up and stuffing into your pockets as many gold pieces as you can carry um well there's 52 of them so so let's give ourselves uh let's, let's put plus 60 and that's annoying wasn't it didn't want to do that done it again i'm pressing the return button instead of the backspace. Yes, yeah, so that's 52 plus 8, which is 60. So plus 60. Um, I have to put plus 60 to differentiate them, so, uh, differentiate those ones from... Uh, to differentiate them, not themselves, uh, them from the, the 4 with the Z on them. Anyway, so that's 60. Um, you take a look at the various objects, I mean, the various books, charts and scrolls. Most of them are on the subject of the human and the non-human brain. The charts are mainly of Alansia, in particular the areas surrounding Firetop Mountain. The scrolls are written mostly in symbols, but you do find one written in your own language. It is headed the Elementals. You read it and learn that in order to create an elemental from a golden dragon's tooth, the holder of the dragon's tooth must cast it on the floor and say the word... Um, cachondo. Repeating the word over and over in your mind, you pass through the door from which the mind bender appeared. Turn to 249. Again, let's just put cachondo. Um, cachondo. No, I put cajondo. Sounds like something out of. Uh, uh, sounds like the name of a Native American. Although, to be honest, cachondo sounds like one of those as well. Cachondo with dragon's teeth. Lovely, right. Uh, 249. Uh, the door opens into another corridor. Uh, this, you see, leads into a long marble-floored hallway, which is roughly twice the width of the corridor and is lined with what appears to be statues. Uh, a marble hallway, which is roughly twice the width of the corridor, uh, and is lined with what appear where with what appear to be statues, three on either side. But in fact, the statues are all mummies; their shrivelled bodies wrapped in stained hessian. Uh, you enter the hallway on tiptoe, looking around as you go. 
At the far end of the hallway there is a door. A clock suddenly chimes and the mummies all move and begin to climb down from their columns. Not one of them is aware of your presence. Yet. If you have a ring of invisibility, turn to 328. If you do not have a ring of invisibility, turn to 85. Okay, do we have this ring? Um, yep, there is ring of invisibility. Right, we do have a ring of invisibility, so let's use it. Turn to 85, I mean, turn to 328, because we do have it. Um, you rub the old ring, hoping its magic is still there. Test your luck. If you're lucky, turn to 346. If you are unlucky, turn to 192. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, test our luck. We need it to be we need a dice score to be less than or equal to 11. So, roll two dice less than or equal to 11. Here we go, and we get an eight. Good. It's only one out of 36 chance that we get a, a 12. Um, or um, two, because there's only one uh, way we can get two, and that's uh, with two ones. And there's only one way we can get twelve, and that's with two sixes. So each one is uh, um, one out of thirty-six chance. Um, how many ways are, get, are, are there of getting seven, then? Well, there's one and six, six and one, uh, five and two, two and five, three and four, four and three, and that's it. So uh, there are six out of thirty-six ways of getting seven uh, so there must be six out of thirty six is one out of twelve uh, no, uh, no sorry one out of six sorry I can't count uh, six out of thirty six is one out of six so whenever you um, so whenever you roll two dice uh, you have one in six chance um, of scoring seven that's that's why seven is is the most common uh, uh, that's why seven is is the most common dice roll. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, so we have a ring of invisibility. Um, I mean, yeah. So it, uh, so uh, so we were lucky, but we have to use a luck point up, don't we? So put it down to ten. There we go. And then let's go to 346 because we were lucky. Just use the scroll wheel because it's nearby. The old ring has just enough magic left in it to make you uh, to make you invisible, but only for a minute or two. Um, while the mummies are walking around as though exercising their stiff limbs, you escape through the door at the end of the hallway just as the magic is wearing off. Turn to 102. I don't think it's the end if you don't have a ring of invisibility. I think you can do something else like burn them somehow. I don't I can't remember. Anyway, the door opens into a small antechamber, the main feature of which is an incredibly ornate door in the far wall. A huge letter Z stands in relief on the door, which is embossed with gold leaf. Guarding the door is a brutal-looking beast, its outstretched arms resting on the handle of a large spiked club. The beast has leather cross belts looped around its hairy torso and sports two spiked shoulder pads. While its head is wolf-like, it also has horns and is far more aggressive. Will you try to bluff your way past the guard, 10 to 69, or waste no time but attack, 10 to 198? Oh dear, blimey! It's scary. It's, it's it's very similar to those things on Golden Axe 2, actually. Coincidentally, since I only did that those videos a week ago, or um, a week ago or so, it's very similar. You know, they have horns, they have a dog's head, and they're muscular, and they have a um, a big mace thing, spike club thing. But this one looks a lot scarier. It's, this one's quite nasty. Blimey, that is an evil-looking creature. Uh, we're going to try and bluff our way past, of course. Um, Yeah, we're going to try and bluff our way past because, you know, might as well. Uh, might as well have a go. 69. The worst he can do is attack us, which is what he'd do anyway. So 69. That is a nasty looking creature. Blimey. Creature of nightmares. Okay, you stride confidently over to the guard. What will you do to get it to open the door? Offer it 10 gold pieces, 10 to 214. Tell it that you are the relief guard, <laughs> 10 to 385. Offer it Dark Blade Skullbiter's Sword, 10 to 202. Uh, we're going to offer it Dark Blade Skullbiter's Sword, 10 to 202, because we do have that. We don't really need it, it doesn't actually do anything special. The guard snarls but appears to be interested in the sword. You hold out the weapon and the guard snatches it from your hand. Uh, the beast looks closely at the blade and even sniffs it, satisfied that what it has got 
gotten. Well, I, I usually say gotten instead of got, but I don't mind got, but I'll say gotten. Uh, satisfied that what it has gotten is worth having, it takes one of the keys on its belt and unlocks the great door. You waste no time walking to the door. Turn to 169. Okay, so you've used up the uh, the sword. Dark blade swords. Let's use that up. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Oh, I have another sword. Um, yeah. uh, let's leave it like that. Who cares? Right, okay. So you've used up dark blade sword. Turn to 169. Let's go. You enter a large chamber which is brightly lit by glowing domes on the wall and uh, on the walls and ceiling. Uh, you observe two black-robed men with black skull caps. Between them, they are carrying a body towards a marble table, where two men in white robes and white skull caps are waiting with gleaming knives in hands. Uh, the, uh, the death lords are Zagor's personal physicians. On seeing you, one of the death lords raises his knife and calls out. Two goblins armed with bows and arrows suddenly appear from a side room. They both take aim and fire at you. If you are carrying a shield, turn to 340. If you are not carrying a shield, turn to 189. Okay, are we carrying a shield? Uh, yes, here it is, finally. I was getting worried there. Yes, we do have a polished shield. Uh, that counts, so turn to 340, yeah, because we need this, I think. Um, I'll end the, uh, the book in this video, even though it might go on a bit, because I'm nearly finished. You turn your shield in the direction of the goblins at the very moment when they release their arrows, and you hear the missiles thud into the shield. The goblins run forward to attack you with their clubs, urged on by the Death Lords. Um... To attack you with the clubs, oh, I've, yeah, here it is. Um, fight the goblins one at a time. If you do not have a sword at the moment, you must temporarily reduce your skill by two points during this combat. If you win, turn to 163. Okay, one at a time. First goblin, second goblin, five, four, five, five. They always do that. They never have them with exactly the same, uh, exactly the same numbers. They always have like one slightly different. Okay, first goblin, uh, five, four. Okay, let's roll for him first. Um, he gets an 8, that's 13. I get 7, that's 19. So 13 to 19. This won't take long. And a 2. <clears throat> okay, next one. He gets an 11, that's uh, 16. I get 11, that's 23. So 16 to 23. That's the first goblin taken care of. Lucky I could do it one at a time. Okay, second goblin. Whoops. This one was skill five, stamina five. It means he needs three hits. Whoops, shouldn't have done that there. Okay, so I think it was that anyway, wasn't it? <coughs> yeah, skill five, stamina five. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so he gets uh, a twelve. At 17, I get an 8, that's 20. Good job he's extremely weak, otherwise that would have been quite annoying. Okay, 20. And that puts him down to 3. Okay, next one. He gets a 9, that's uh, 14. I get an 8, that's 20. So 14 to 20. 1, just one more hit now. And they're done. He gets a 9, that's uh, 14. Uh, yep, 14. I get a 7, that's 19. 14 to 19. Brilliant. Right, okay, that's him dead. That's, that's a new goblin he's taken care of. Get rid of the annoying buzzing. There we go. Okay, if you win, turn to 163. Nice easy fight. The Death Lords turn and run through an archway at the back of the chamber, screaming at the top of their voices. If you wish to chase after them, turn to 219. If you'd rather enter the side room from which the goblins had appeared, had appeared rather, turn to 125. Okay, we're going to enter the side room, so turn to 125. Uh, 
the room is very small. It contains two stools, a small table on which lie two two bowls of steaming soup, a staff and a wicker basket. A small clawed foot protrudes from one of the bowls of soup, putting off any thoughts you may have had of drinking it. Will you look at the staff, 10 to 20? Uh, take the lid off the basket, 10 to 107. Leave the room and chase after the death lords. We're going to look at the staff, 10 to 20. It's a pity I need some health. Now the staff is made of polished hawthorn with a skull carved from bone fixed on top. You decide to take it with you. If you haven't done so already, you may take the lid off the basket to 107. Otherwise, there's nothing left. Uh, there's nothing for you to do except to pursue the death lords. Tender 2019. Okay, uh, uh, staff of polished hawthorn. Okay, um, we're now going to um, pursue. Um, we're now going to pursue the Death Lords. Not open the basket. Probably has a snake in it or something. So 219. Uh, you run through the archway into a circular room with a marble floor. At the back of the room, marble steps lead up to another archway, above which is a single stone with the letter Z embossed on it in gold. But between you and the steps stand the four death lords huddled together on a gold crescent inlaid in the marble floor. They are holding small metal spheres above their heads as though they are about to throw them at you. Um, they look at you coldly and start to murmur an incantation. An incantation. Uh, the floor starts to tremble as the voices grow louder. Um, suddenly, the floor all round you opens up, and you are left teetering on the edge of a deep chasm. Uh, um, a deep chasm, rather. Um, will you try to jump across this chasm? Ten to forty-six, or use a magic item to halt the earthquake? Ten to three hundred fifty-four. Okay, we're going to use a magic item. So, ten to three hundred fifty-four. Guess which magic item we're going to use. Now, the small stone island on which you are standing starts to crumble away and grow smaller. Um, you must act quickly. You will have time to try only one uh, to try only one item. If you have any of the following uh, let me start again. If you have any of the following objects, will you drop an onyx egg down the chasm? Turn to 153. Um, drop a glass marble down the chasm. Turn to 394. Or tap the floor with where. Uh, Tap the floor with a skull staff. If you, if, you, if you do not have any of the articles named above, you will have to jump across the chasm, turn to 46. Okay, we do have a skull staff, so let's use that, 65. Um, you tap the ground twice with a staff, and as quickly as the chasm had opened up, the ground closes again. The Death Lords look suddenly nervous as you walk towards them with the skull staff in your hand. One of them calls out, and they all throw their razor-sharp spheres at you. How can a sphere be razor-sharp? It must have blades on it. Uh, uh, I mean, by definition, it's round. Anyway, um, roll one die, then add one to the number rolled um, for each of the following pieces of armor you may be wearing or carrying. A shield, a helmet, or a breastplate. If the total is 1 to 4, 10 to 25. If the total is 5 or more, 10 to 235. Okay. We are wearing a breastplate and carrying, um, and we are carrying a shield, so we can roll a die and add two to it. But we don't have, um, we don't have a helmet, so we can roll one die and add two to it. So we're carrying a polished shield and a breastplate. So, so let's roll one die and add two to it. And we need it to be, uh, I might add. We need it to be uh, fight the total after we add two to it to be five or more. Otherwise, it's not very good at all. Trust me. So we're going to roll a die and we get a three. Add two to it and we get a five. Thank God for that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have to do it again. So yeah, so we get five. So the total is five or more. Ten to three hundred and thirty-five. That's why it helps if you have a helmet, but I didn't pick one up. And here's the man himself, I think. Uh, the four spheres, um, uh, the four spheres fly past you, lodging in the wall behind you. As each sphere hits the wall, one of the Death Lords vaporizes, leaving only his robes behind and a crumpled heap on the floor. Seeing the letter Z, um, I'll say that again. Seeing the letter Z 
above the archway at the top of the steps spurs you into action. Uh, you bound up the steps and run through the archway. You now find yourself in a palatial hall. A row of columns runs its length, and at the end there are more steps leading up to a plinth. Seated calmly there on an ornate throne is the most evil-looking man you have ever seen in your life. Uh, the skin on his face is drawn taut across his skull and is held by stitches down both sides of his face. His robes are a combination of purple, black and white, and a large red Z is emblazoned across his chest. You are face to face with Zagor himself. Welcome, fool, he says slowly and menacingly. I have been expecting you, although I didn't think you would get this far. But now your reward is a slow and painful death. It was considerate of you to bring me the last limb I need to rebuild my body. Your left, la um, your left arm looks strong. I'll take it. He thrusts his own left arm out of his robes and you see that it is a skeletal stump. His right arm is also visible and you can see stitches all round his wrist where an outsized hand has been sewn onto a strong arm. This giant hand holds a crystal which sparkles in the yellow light from the domes. Without warning, he tosses the crystal into the air and utters some unintelligible words before catching it again. The air in the hall starts to stir and soon builds to a howling gale. Zagor calmly remains seated on his throne as a whirlwind howls down the hall towards you. Its vaguely human shape means that it can, uh, that it can be only one thing, an air elemental. Um, but the elementals that Zagor can summon are the demon elementals from the plane of chaos. No weapons can affect them. They can be destroyed only by supreme elementals from, from the plane of light. Now, their material forms are golden dragon's teeth. If you have any golden, if you have any golden dragon's teeth, turn to 113. If you do not have any, turn to 177. And there's Zagor himself. Mm, it doesn't look that evil. Okay, uh, well, that's a nice, it's a nice illustration. I prefer the illustrations on the uh, first, the first book, um, Warlock of Firetop Mountain. It's really good illustrations in that one. Okay, so we do have some. Um, so we're going to turn to 113. You take the dragon's teeth out of your pocket just before the air elemental is upon you. Um, you must activate one immediately. If you know the magic word that releases the magic in these teeth, you may say it now. Will you say Zabaron, turn to 344, or Kachondo, turn to 55? It's Kachondo, so turn to 55. We only found it out a few paragraphs ago. Now, the dragon's teeth in the palm of your hand begin to feel warm, raising your spirits as the air elemental starts to envelop you. Now, the noise of the wind is deafening. Um, you must cast one of the teeth on the floor immediately. If you know which one to use, turn to the paragraph which has the same number as the number on the tooth. If you do not have the tooth or do not have the right one to count the air, the air elemental, turn to 365. Okay, so we have... Um, um, air elemental of light destroys... We need the one that destroys the air elemental of chaos. Number 94 and destroys an air elemental of chaos. And we do have a 94 one. There it is. So we're going to go to paragraph 94. Um... So we're going to use the earth elemental. Is it the earth one? Yeah, it must be, because we have the water of light, the fire of light, and the air of light. It must be the earth one. So 94, we're going to turn to paragraph 94. Here we go. Nearly there. Now the tooth bounces up off the floor and breaks into two. A massive stone humanoid rises up out of the ground and between you and the air elemental. It is an earth elemental that you have summoned. A great battle ensues as the earth elemental, its head down, slowly pushes back the raging whirlwind until its evil forces are spent. Um, quiet suddenly returns to the hall as the wind drops. The air elemental is defeated and the earth elemental shrinks back into the tooth on the floor. Zagor looks surprised, then frowns while he, con um, while he concentrates on his next summoning. A fountain of water suddenly spurts out from the base of the steps and takes on the shape of a watery giant. Um, like a tidal wave, it streams down the hall to engulf you. Um, you need to cast another gold tooth on the floor to halt the water elemental. If you know which one to use, turn to the paragraph which has the same number as the one on the tooth. If you do not have the right tooth to counter the water elemental, turn to 365. Okay, which one counts as the water one? 
Storage the water one. Yep. We need the air elemental of lights. 186. Do we have that one? Uh, 2794. Yeah, gold tooth. 186. Let's go there now. Now the tooth bounces up off the floor and breaks in two. A jet of air shoots up from the floor where the tooth hits and starts to spin faster and faster. It increases in size until it uh, develops into the raging world when that is an air elemental. As the torrent of water roars down the hall, it is halted by the invisible hand of the air elemental. The wall of water climbs up to the ceiling as it battles to push past the raging cyclone that blocks its path. But the air elemental is stronger and pushes the wall of water back down the hall until it subsides into a harmless pool. The water elemental is defeated and the air elemental shrinks back into the tooth on the floor. Zagor, now angry, curses and shouts, his good arm uh, gesticulating madly in the air as he summons yet another elemental of chaos. The ground in front of the, uh, the, ground in front of the steps suddenly erupts as boulders, marble and earth rise up and fuse together into a gargantuan stone humanoid, an earth elemental. Another dragon's tooth is needed to defeat it. If you have one and know how to use it, turn to the paragraph which has the same number as the one on the tooth. If you do not have the, uh, the tooth that can defeat the earth elemental, turn to 365. Earth Elemental. Uh, we need the Fire Elemental of Light, and it's numbered 315. Um, we have a Gold Dragon's Tooth with no markings on it. Yeah, so we have a gold dragon's tooth with no markings, and apparently in later versions of the book they actually corrected that and made it so that it's uh, it has the number 186, not, not 186, sorry, uh, 315 on it because that's the one we need. But we do have a gold um, a gold dragon's tooth with no markings, so that so we have to assume that one is the 315 one. It's the fire elemental of light. It's number 315 destroys the earth elemental of chaos. So we need to go to 315. Yeah, apparently in, in later issues of the book they actually corrected that. I, th I think the wizard might be the wizard reissues or something like that because they reissued these books to another publisher. Um, you drop the third golden tooth on the floor and watch it break in two. A jet of flame shoots up from the floor and forms into a huge fiery humanoid, a fire elemental. The earth elemental strides down the hall, but strangely... The fire elemental does not move to defend you. As Zagor's elemental gets closer, you start to worry. Then you notice that a rat has picked up one half of the dragon's tooth and is on the point of running off with it. Unless both halves are touching the ground, the elemental cannot be fully released. If you have a throwing dagger, turn to 14. If you do not have a throwing dagger, turn to 297. Okay, we do have a throwing dagger, turn to 14. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Um. You whip the uh, the dagger out of your boot and throw it at the rat. At such short range you can hardly miss, and you skewer it to the floor. The piece of tooth rolls onto the floor just in time to release the fire elemental, as the massive earth elemental is descending on you. The fire elemental wraps its fiery arm uh, around the waist of the earth elemental and tries to lift it off by the ground. Uh, lift it off the ground. At the same time, it is being pounded by gigantic stone fists. The battle rages for some minutes until finally the earth elemental crumbles into a heap of broken boulders and scorched earth. Uh, the flame dies and you look up to the throne where Zagor sits, looking ill at ease. He begins to chant again. Let's have a quick look at the picture. That's what happened. There we go. Raging battle. And there's the, the rat that was skewered by the dagger. I feel sorry for it. It's not the rat's fault. Um, he begins to chant again. He has decided to copy you, and suddenly a jet of flame shoots out of the floor at the bottom of the steps. Another fiery humanoid has been summoned, a fire elemental, the last of his elementals of chaos. If you have one more golden dragon's tooth, you must throw it on the floor to defend yourself against a demon fire. If you have the right tooth, turn to the paragraph which has the same number as the one on the tooth. If you do not have the, uh, if you, if you do not have the tooth, turn to 365. Yeah, so we have... Uh, the gold, the gold tooth twenty. I mean, we have gold tooth hundred eighty six, gold tooth twenty seven, um, gold dragon's tooth no markings, and gold dragon's tooth ninety four. So just to confirm, the last one we used. So that's the one that was three hundred fifteen. But I think in later editions of the book, with other publishers, they corrected that and actually put three hundred fifteen on it, because it's a bit difficult to understand. But that is the one that we need. That's the earth one. I mean, uh, the fire one that defeats the earth one. Anyway, the water element. We need one that defeats the fire one. The water elemental of light is number 27 and destroys the fire elemental of chaos. Elemental of chaos. Uh, number 27, so we need to go to 27, which we do have. It's there. So, 27 we go. Not too far away. 
Um, you drop the tooth on the floor and watch it break in two. A fountain of water shoots up out of the floor and rises, forming into the shape of a liquid titan. Suddenly it flows forward and crashes down on top of the fire elemental in a giant cloud of steam. The, wa uh, the water elemental hisses loudly as it, uh, as it battles rather um, with the flames. For a moment it looks as if the water elemental will boil away to nothing, but gradually the flames die down and go out. Quiet returns to the hall as the water elemental retreats to the tooth. When the steam clears, you see Zagor standing at the base of the steps. He looks shaken and stands with his head a little down. Uh, uh, perhaps his magic power is all but spent. We will finish this battle with a duel, he says solemnly. We will fight with long knives and wearing no armour. Accept this challenge, or with my last energies I will crush you with a, fun uh, with a thunderbolt. We are equals, you and I, and we must fight on equal terms. It is the struggle between chaos and order we must decide. If I win, chaos will swallow Alansia. If I lose, order will return. Prepare to die. Chaos awaits Alansia. Zagor removes his robes and stands bare-chested before you. Ugly red scars cover his body as a result of the many transplants he has, re he has recently received. The skeletal s stump, that is, his left arm, uh, protrudes awkwardly from his shoulder. You shudder at the sight of him. Uh, you know you must accept his challenge, so you remove your armour. Uh, Zagor throws you a knife and walks slowly towards you. The fate of Lanzia rests on this final battle. Zagor, skill 11, stamina 18. If you win, turn to 400. Okay, final battle, 11-18. Zagor. So after two easy fights with the goblins... We have a difficult fight with Zagor himself. Okay, let's do this. I have 15 stamina left. If I lose, I'll just have to do it again, but uh, pretending like it, nothing ever happened. Starting from 15 stamina again. Okay, so he has 11, I have 12. Let's go. He gets a 6, that's 17. I get a 4, that's 16. That's annoying. So 17 to 16. He just wins. So he puts me down to 13. Okay, next. Okay, he gets a 4, that's 15. I get a 5, that's uh, 17. So 15 to 17. Oh, next blood comes to me. or um, uh, Next blood is stricken by me. 15 to 17, he goes down to 16. Okay. He gets a 10, that's 11, I mean 21. Uh, I get a 5, that's 17. So 21 to 17. Puts me down to 11. Need to do better than that, really, but... Never mind. Okay. He gets an 8, that's 19. I get a 7, that's 19. So it's equal. So 19 to 19, so no majority. So no damage. Okay, he gets an 8, that's 19. I get a 7, that's 19. Okay, so again, 19 to 19. I swear this dice program is dodgy. All right, he has it in for me. He gets a 5, that's 16. I get a 7, that's 19. Uh, so that's 19, uh, 16 to 19. I win. Good. He's down to 14 now. I'm going to use luck, just because it's the last battle, I might as well. So we have 10 luck points. If this is lucky, then I get another 2 points off. If it's unlucky, I have to restore a point to him. So this this dice roll needs to be 10 or less. Yep, good, I was lucky. Um, so I can restore, I can get rid of another 2 another two stamina points. Makes it a bit easier. Okay, so that's... Yep, I need to get off a luck point, though. So that puts me down to 9. So it'll be harder to be lucky next time. So I might not do it next time. Um... Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. The next one. Okay, he gets a 6, that's 17. I get an 8, that's 20. So 17 to 20. That puts him down to 10, so he has lower stamina than I have now. Okay, um, well, famous last words. He gets a 9, yeah, I knew it was. That's a 20. Um, I get a 9, oh, that's 21, brilliant. So 20 to 21. So he goes down to 8. Brilliant. I could actually do this first time. Okay, he gets a 6. That's 17. I get a 6. That's um, 18. Brilliant. So 
So 17 to 18, beaten by one point again, purely because I have one more skill point than he does. So the dice rolls are the same. Okay, he gets a 7, that's 18. I get a 3, that's four, uh, 15. So 17 to 15, so that means he takes some more damage off me. Does be some more damage, rather. He, he takes some more health off, is what I mean. Okay. This is this is a tough one, isn't it? This is this is uh, the tension is uh, driving me mad here. He gets an eight, that's nineteen. I get a nine, that's twenty. So that's uh, nine. I mean, I get a nine, that's twenty-one. So nineteen to twenty-one, good. Some decent dice rolls for once. Okay, just two more hits in theory. Should I use luck? Yeah, go on then. Okay, I need this to be nine or less. Five, good. I was lucky. Okay, so that means I get to take another two points off him, because I was lucky, but luck now goes down to eight, so it's even riskier if I use luck now, but in theory I shouldn't have to use luck, because you need two more points left, and if I get the two points off with one hit, I won't need to use luck, so that's the last time I'll actually ever have to use luck in theory, unless I screw this up, or the dice screws it up for me. Okay, last one. He gets an eight, that's 19. I get an eight, that's 20. Yes, we're done. So, 19 to 20. We actually... Um, a lot of the time we actually got equal dice rolls, but uh, because I have one more skill point than he does, uh, I actually won every time that it was equal. Okay, so Zagor is dead, and I think this is it, because we're going to paragraph 400 to get rid of the buzzing. If you win, turn to 400. Here we go, this is it, and we've just gone over an hour, so, uh, so we, we're ending this not too soon. Okay, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain is defeated. Still panting heavily from exhaustion following the battle, you stand over the body of Zagor. Many of, uh, many of his stitches have burst open grotesquely, but at least Alanzu is saved. You walk up the steps to Zagor's throne, which is made of solid gold, set with hundreds of jewels. Your fortune is there for the taking. You fill your backpack with treasure and eventually find your way out of the mountain labyrinth. In just over a day, you are back in Anvil, recounting your quest to the cheering villagers. Zagor is dead. Long live Alanzia, they all chant. Filled with excitement, they ask you to lead them back to Firetop Mountain so they can witness Zagor's demise for themselves and help themselves to some of his treasure. Uh, you finally agree, but put a limit of ten on the party to accompany you. The, uh, the twisting labyrinth of passages appears deserted. Zagor's guards and servants have all fled. When you finally reach Zagor's hall, you find his body still lying face down where it had fallen. Uh, the villagers crowd round it laughing, commenting and arguing. You walk over and roll the body over with your foot. A sudden gasp comes from the villagers. There is a big smile on Zagor's face and his eyes are wide open. Although he is undoubtedly dead, um, although he is undoubt although he is undoubtedly dead. But the thing that worries you most is that his skeletal left arm is missing and that was the only bit of Zagor that was truly his own could Zagor uh, could that bony stump grow into another incarnation of Zagor surely not Okay, that's the end of that. Okay, so that was a good book. Enjoyed that. The only bit I the only bit I screwed up on it uh, on that book was the uh, the stupid bit in the last video where I have to do the eye eating contest because you need you have to get one of the gold teeth from that. So you have to at least you you have rather at least to defeat the barbarian in the eyeball eating contest, which is just luck. It's fifty fifty whether you beat him or not. So you don't have to win the whole thing. Uh, it doesn't matter if you... Yeah, but you can't be the outright loser. You have to beat at least the, the Barbarian. Otherwise, you can't win the whole game. It's it's just ridiculous. Anyway, uh, Shadow Master, Ian Livingstone and Mark Gascoigne. Chaos stalks the wiki... Uh, wiki? The Wildlands... That does look like wiki a bit. Uh, the Wildlands of Northern Alansia. Cruel bandits raid the villages, ransacking and looting as they go. Now, though the attackers are in search of a treasure far more valuable than gold... Oh. Now, though, the you know, attackers are in search of a treasure far more valuable than gold. Um, driven by their inhuman leader, they are in pursuit of the key that will unlock the very mysteries of life and death itself. The sorcerer Yasdromo, for so long uh, the self-appointed guardian of the lands around Darkwood Forest, cannot stand idly by while his countrymen are put to the sword. With Chadder Darkmane close at hand, Yasdromo embarks on a quest to discover the source of the raids and the sinister reason behind them. Um, what they discover is that when chaos rules, nothing can ever be as it seems. Fair hides foul, insanity hides inner order, and darkness lurks deep uh, deep within the light. Can Yastromo and Darkmane defeat these illusions to discover the real master of the shadows? Only Shadow Master 
any Shadow Master, the third fighting fantasy novel, can tell you. Yeah, I've never really read the uh, the novels, as I said. But yeah, that's the end of that. Um, there's some more pages there. I don't know why that's a repeat of that one. But did we have 347? We should do, because I went on that one, didn't I? Yeah, there it is. For some reason they've repeated this one. I've no idea what they've scanned that one two times. I don't know why, but there's a lovely picture of the orc about to eat a rat, which is absolutely repulsive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, Return to Firetop Mountain by Ian Livingstone. Apart from the apart from the grammar mistakes and the uh, 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 the silly gameplay mechanics that are involved in this one, I'm, I am I'm looking at you eyeballs. Um, yeah, so my next video will probably be Alex Kidd, The Lost Stars on the Sega Master System. Then I'll do Alex Kidd, High Tech World. Oh no, then I'll then I'll do... No, the next video actually is going to be Deep Duck Trouble on the Game Gear. That's what I was going to do. Then I'm going to do uh, Alex Kidd, The Lost Stars on the Master System. Then Alex Kidd, High Tech World on the Master System. And then, finally, Alex Kidd in Miracle World on the Master System. But I'll only do Alex Kidd in Miracle World because I'm actually at 955 or something subscribers. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, then I'll do Alex Kidd in Miracle World, since it'll be my a thousand subscriber special. If, if you remember, I did a 500 subscriber special where there was a question and answer thing. Although a few people asked questions, it, there wasn't really much enthusiasm I found for asking me questions, and I did enjoy doing that. But I don't think there'll be even less enthusiasm uh, enthusiasm for asking me even more questions because, um, because um, yeah, because I think. All the questions have been used up, really, for uh, on the 500 subscriber one. So I think for the 1,000 subscriber special, I'll do Alex Kidd in Miracle World, since that's a quite a popular Master System game, and I haven't done that one yet. So if I haven't reached... I'll only do Alex Kidd in Miracle World if I've re reached 1,000 subscribers after I've done Alex Kidd High Tech World. If I haven't reached 1,000 subscribers by the time I've done Alex Kid High Tech World, I shall wait and wait and wait until I've reached 1,000 subscribers, and I won't do another video, and, and I won't do Alex Kid in Miracle World until I have 1,000 subscribers. I might do another video, but I won't do Alex Kid in Miracle World until I get to that 1,000 subscriber. Not that I care about subscribers, but it just makes it more easy. It just makes it a bit easy. Um, well, not easy, but it makes it more interesting for you, the viewer. Um, you know, gets a bit of excitement there. There's not enough excitement in people's lives, I think. So, um, um, thanks to you, uh, uh, thanks to me, um, you are getting some excitement with my channel. So that's the excitement I'm going to provide for you. Anyway, so yeah, that was uh, a Return to Firetop Mountain by Ian Livingstone. Next video will be Deep Duck Trouble on the Game Gear. So thank you for watching and goodbye.